Hi boys and girls, this is lecture 8.7. Today's review topic, functions defined by integrals. If uppercase f of x is equal to the integral from 0 to x of lowercase f of t dt, where f of t equals 4t cubed, then f of x is that integral from 0 to x of 4t cubed dt, which is equal to t to the fourth from 0 to x which would be x to the fourth minus zero to the fourth, which would equal x to the fourth. But what if uppercase f of x is equal to the integral from zero to x of f of t dt, where f of t is not given to us as some sort of function, but rather as a graph, which looks something like this. We can find these function values by calculating area between the curve and the x-axis from zero to whatever x value is chosen. This integral functions as an accumulator of area between the curve and the x-axis. So f of zero would be the area between the curve and the x-axis from zero to zero. f of three would be the area between the curve and the x-axis from zero to three, etc. Notice I have a few areas marked on this coordinate plane. Those that fall below the x-axis will be negative area values, and those that are above will be positive area values. Let's find f of zero. This means the area from zero to zero between the curve and the x-axis. Since we don't move off our starting point here, we don't accumulate any area. Therefore, the value of this integral is zero. f of zero, then, is zero. From zero to three, we'll need the area of this triangle, negative nine. Therefore, f of 3 is negative 9. From 0 to 5, we'll accumulate this area from 0 to 3, which is negative 9, and we'll add to that this area, which is negative 6. Therefore, f of 5 is negative 15. For f of 7, we'll accumulate the area from 0 to 3, from 3 to 5, and also from 5 to 7. Negative 9 and negative 6 is negative 15 plus 6, gives us a value of negative 9. Therefore, f of 7 is negative 9. For f of 10, we'll accumulate all of the area from 0 to 10. That will be this amount, which is negative 9, added to negative 6, negative 15. We'll add positive 6, negative 9. Adding that to 18 gives us a combined area of 9. Therefore, f of 10 is 9. Let uppercase f of x equal the integral from 0 to x of lowercase f of t dt, where the graph of f is shown at right. Complete the following chart. Notice the lower endpoint of integration is 0, which means that will be your starting point in calculating areas to the right or to the left. Notice we're going to find uppercase f of negative 2 to start, which means we'll need the area from 0 to negative 2. When you go backwards to calculate an area, the function value will be the opposite sign of whatever the area is. If the area is positive, it will be a negative value. If the area is negative, it will be a positive value. So first, we're going to calculate the area of this rectangle. The width is 2, and the height is 3, which means that this is an area of 6. From 0 to negative 2 is an area of 6. However, since we had to go backwards to calculate that area, the function value f of negative 2 is negative 6. Now let's find the value of f of negative 1 by calculating the area from 0 to negative 1. Again, we're going backwards. The area of this rectangle is 3, but since it's a positive area, we'll need to make it a negative value in our chart since we had to move backwards to calculate that area. From 0 to 0, no area is accumulated, so f of 0 is 0. From 0 to 1 is an area of 3. Now that we're moving to the right and calculating these areas, the sign of the area will be the sign of the function value. From 0 to 1, we have a rectangle with area 3. From 0 to 2, a rectangle with area 6. From 0 to 3, a rectangle of area 9. And from 0 to 4, a rectangle of area 12. So these are the function values of uppercase f of x. On what interval is f positive? f is completely above the x-axis, so it's positive on its entire domain, negative infinity to infinity. On what interval, if any, is f negative? It's not. It never drops below the x-axis. 
on what interval is uppercase f of x increasing? Since lowercase f is the slope function of uppercase f and it's completely positive, that means uppercase f of x is increasing on its entire domain as well negative infinity to positive infinity. On what interval, if any, is f of x decreasing? It's not decreasing because once again, the slope function is completely positive. Determine an algebraic rule for f. Well, as you can see, this is just the horizontal line, three. So the algebraic rule here, f of x is equal to three. Essentially, that means for uppercase f of x, the slope is constantly 3. So now we'll be able to determine an algebraic rule for uppercase f. It's going to be a line with a slope of 3. And what is its y-intercept? At 0, the function value is 0. So since we know that the slope is 3 and the y-intercept is 0, uppercase f of x will be 3x, the line 3x. Let's plot these values to see that this is true. Negative 2, negative 6 is somewhere down here. Then we have negative 1, negative 3, which is here. 0, 0, 1, 3, 2, 6, which is up here somewhere. But you can see if we connected these dots, we'd have the linear function uppercase f of x equals 3x. Let uppercase f of x equal the integral from 2 to x of lowercase f of t dt, where the graph of f is shown at right, and complete the following chart. Notice in this integral, the lower endpoint of integration is 2. So that's our starting point for calculating our areas. When going backwards, we'll use the opposite sign of the area as the function value. When going forwards or to the right, we'll use the actual sign of the area as the sign of the function value. Let's start with f of negative 2. So we'll need to calculate the area from positive 2 to negative 2. That's a rectangle with a width of 4 and a height of 2, so that value is an area of negative 8. However, since we're going backwards, we'll use the opposite sign of that area. f of negative 2 will be positive 8. Going back to negative 1 will give us an area of negative 6, but again, moving backwards means we use the opposite sign of the area, positive 6. f of 0 here will be the area from 2 to 0, a rectangle with an area of negative 4. Still moving backwards, however, means that that function value will be positive 4. From 2 to 1, backwards again with an area of negative 2 gives us a function value of positive 2. From 2 to 2, no area is accumulated, so this function value is 0. From 2 to 3, now moving forward, the area is negative 2, which means the function value is the same sign as the area negative 2. And then finally, from 2 to 4, it's an area of negative 4, and that means the function value is negative 4. On what interval is f negative? f is completely below the x-axis, so it's negative on its entire domain, from negative infinity to infinity. On what interval is uppercase f of x decreasing? Remember that lowercase f represents the slope function, and since it's negative on its entire domain, that means uppercase f of x is decreasing on its entire domain. Now let's determine an algebraic rule for lowercase f. As you can see, it's just the horizontal line, negative 2. So lowercase f is f of x equals negative 2. Since this is a slope function, it means that for uppercase f of x, the slope is constantly negative 2. Again, that means uppercase f of x is a line with a slope of negative 2. To find the algebraic rule for uppercase f, we'll need the equation of a line. We have the slope, and the y-intercept is the function value at 0, which is 4. So since we know the slope is negative 2, and the y-intercept is 4, uppercase f of x is negative 2x plus 4. Let's plot a few of these points to verify this is so. At 0, we're at 4. At 1, we're at 2. At 2, we're at 0, and at 3, we're at negative 2, 4, we're at negative 4. So you can see that this is indeed a line with a slope of negative 2, and the y-intercept is 4. 
Let uppercase f of x equal the integral from 0 to x of lowercase f of t dt, where the graph of f is shown at right. Complete the following chart. Notice our slope function is not a constant function in this example. The slopes vary. This means that uppercase f of x is not a line, it's a curve. Therefore, we're not going to be able to determine an algebraic rule for uppercase f of x as we were able to do in the previous two examples. The lower endpoint of integration is zero, so that will be our starting point when calculating these areas. To find f of negative 2, we're going to need to find the area between the x-axis and the curve from zero to negative 2. This is a trapezoid, so we'll add the two bases, 2 plus 6 is 8, multiply that by the height of the trapezoid, 2, 16, and take half of it. So this area is negative 8. But since we moved backwards to calculate that area, the function value f of negative 2 will be positive 8. From 0 to negative 1 is another trapezoid, 2 plus 4, 6 times the height 1, 6, and then divided by 2 gives us an area of negative 3. But again, as we moved backwards, this means that the function value will be positive 3. From 0 to 0, no area is accumulated, so that function value is 0. From 0 to 1, we have the area of this triangle, 1 times 2, which is 2, half of that is 1, and it is negative, so this function value is a negative 1. f of 2 will be the area between the curve and the x-axis from 0 to 2. That's the area of this triangle added to the area of this triangle. These triangles have the same area, 1 negative and 1 positive, which means the function value at 2 will be 0. The function value at 3 will be the area of this triangle plus this one plus this trapezoid. We already know that from here to here is 0, so let's find the area of this trapezoid. We have a base of 2 and a base of 4. Adding those together gives me 6 and then multiplying by the height 1, 6, dividing that by 2 gives me an area of 3. So the function value at 3 is 3. f of 4 will be the area of this triangle plus the area of this triangle plus the area of this trapezoid. Since we know that these two triangles combine to give a value of 0, let's find the area of this trapezoid. A base of 2, a base of 6, that's 8, times the width of the trapezoid 2, gives me 16, half of that is 8. So the area of that trapezoid is 8, which means f of 4 is 8. Notice that when I started calculating areas to the right of 0, the sign of the area became the sign of the function value. On what interval is f positive? Since this is a graph of f, you can see that it's positive to the right of 1. So on the interval from 1 to infinity, f is positive. On what interval is f negative? To the left of 1. So that's going to be negative infinity to 1. We don't include 1 here because at 1, f is 0. On what interval is uppercase f increasing? Remember that lowercase f is the slope function of uppercase f. Therefore, this is representing positive slopes on uppercase f. This is representing negative slopes on uppercase f. When the slopes are positive, uppercase f is increasing, and when the slopes are negative, uppercase f is decreasing. So where is uppercase f increasing? Where lowercase f is positive, and that's on the interval from 1 to infinity. On what interval is f decreasing? Where lowercase f is negative, and that's on the interval from negative infinity to 1. Let uppercase f of x equal the integral from 0 to x of lowercase f of t dt, where the graph of f is shown at right. Complete the following chart. Once again, the lower endpoint of integration is 0, so we'll calculate our areas beginning at 0. The first function value we need to find is negative 1. So from 0 to negative 1, the area between the x-axis and the curve is the area of this trapezoid. This base is 4, this base is 6, that's 10, times the width 
1, 10 divided by 2 is 5. This is a positive 5, but since we're moving left to calculate this area, the function value is negative 5. From 0 to 0, no area is accumulated, so the function value there is 0. From 0 to 1, we're now moving to the right, so the sine of the area will be the sine of the function value. We'll need the area of this trapezoid, a base of 4, a base of 2, that's 6, times the height of the trapezoid 1, 6 divided by 2 is 3. That area is 3, which means the function value is 3. F of 2 is going to be the area from 0 to 2, and that's a triangle with a height of 4, a base of 2, 8, half of that is 4. The function value at 3 will be the area of this triangle plus the area of this triangle. We already know that the area of this triangle is 4, so let's add to that the area of this triangle, which is 1 times 2, and then half of that is 1, so this little piece is negative 1. 4 plus negative 1 gives us a combined area of 3, which means the function value at 3 is 3. Now let's find the function value at 4. It's going to be the area of this triangle, add it to the area of this triangle. But once again, you can see that these areas are the same, one positive, one negative, giving you a combined value of 0. Therefore, f of 4 is 0. f of 5 is going to be the area of this triangle, plus the area of this triangle, plus the area of this trapezoid. Since we know that these two areas combine to give us 0, let's find the area of this trapezoid. A base of 4 and a base of 6, that's 10, times the width of the trapezoid 1, 10, half of that 5, a negative 5. So this function value is negative 5. On what interval is lowercase f positive? That's going to be from negative infinity to 2. On what interval is lowercase f negative from 2 to positive infinity? On what interval is uppercase f increasing? Once again, this is the slope function of uppercase f. Where these slopes are positive, uppercase f is increasing, and so that's going to be from negative infinity to 2. On what interval is uppercase f decreasing from 2 to positive infinity? Now let's plot the points x, f of x on the grid provided. We'll have negative 1, negative 5, 0, 0, 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, 3, 4, 0, and 5, negative 5. Connecting these dots gives us a parabola, which looks like that. The last question says, what is the relationship between lowercase f and uppercase f? Uppercase f prime is equal to lowercase f. Let uppercase f of x equal the integral from 0 to x of lowercase f of t dt, where the graph of f is shown at right. Complete the following chart. This is the graph we saw at the beginning of the lecture, so I went ahead and calculated the areas at the specified x values. I also plotted the points x f of x on the grid and sketched a graph of uppercase f of x. Now let's answer these questions. On what interval is lowercase f positive? From 5 to 10. We won't include 5 in the interval because at 5 lowercase f is 0, but we will include 10 because the function value here is positive. On what interval is lowercase f negative? Between 0 and 5. We don't include either of those endpoints because at 0 and 5 lowercase f is 0. On what interval is uppercase f increasing? Since lowercase f is the slope function of uppercase f, uppercase f will be increasing where the slopes are positive, and that is from 5 to 10. On what interval is uppercase f decreasing? That's going to be where we have negative function values for lowercase f between 0 and 5. On what interval is lowercase f decreasing? Notice the question has changed. They're not asking for where the negative function values are on lowercase f. They're asking where it's decreasing, and that's referring to slope. And the slope is decreasing on this interval from 0 to 3 on lowercase f. 
on what interval is lowercase f increasing from 3 to 7? On what interval is the graph of uppercase f concave down? Notice that is going to be where lowercase f was decreasing, concave down from 0 to 3. On what interval is the graph of uppercase F concave up? That's going to be where lowercase f was increasing on the interval from 3 to 7. What is the relationship between lowercase f and uppercase f? Once again, the derivative of uppercase f is lowercase f. Now let's review the second fundamental theorem of calculus. If uppercase f of x is the integral from a to x of lowercase f of t dt, where a is constant and f is a continuous function, then uppercase f prime of x is equal to lowercase f of x, as we saw in the previous two examples. If uppercase f of x is equal to the integral from a to g of x, lowercase f of t dt, where a is constant, f is a continuous function, and g is a differentiable function, then f prime of x is equal to f of g of x times g prime of x. Let's see why this is true. If I were to take the integral from a to g of x of f of t dt, which is defined to be uppercase f of x, then I would have uppercase f of g of x minus uppercase f of a. Now let's find uppercase f prime of x, the derivative of this function. The derivative of this first term would be lowercase f of g of x times the derivative of this inner function g of x, g prime of x, minus the derivative of this term, which is a constant, so that derivative would be zero. Therefore, uppercase f prime of x is equal to lowercase f of g of x, g prime of x, which verifies this result. Now let's check this result by performing the following two steps for each of the functions in exercises 1 through 3. Step 1, given f of t, evaluate uppercase f of x equals the integral from 1 to x of lowercase f of t dt to find uppercase f of x in terms of x. Step 2, take the derivative of the result to determine uppercase f prime of x. Let's try number 1. Uppercase f of x will be the integral from 1 to x of t cubed dt, which will be 1 fourth t to the fourth from 1 to x, which will be 1 fourth x to the fourth minus 1 fourth. That's uppercase f of x. Then what will f prime of x be? It's going to be x cubed which is the original lowercase f of t function with x as the variable instead of t. Now let's do number two. Uppercase f of x is going to be the integral from 1 to x of 4t minus t squared dt. That will be 2t squared minus 1 third t cubed from 1 to x which is 2x squared minus 1 third x cubed minus 2 minus 1 third. Simplifying this expression gives us 2x squared minus 1 third x cubed minus 5 thirds. This is uppercase f of x. So what would uppercase f prime of x be? 4x minus x squared. Again, we see that it's the original lowercase f of t function with the variable x instead of the variable t. Now let's do number three. Uppercase f of x is equal to the integral from 1 to x of cosine t dt, which is sine t from 1 to x which is sine x minus sine 1. 
and we're in danger of a collision with our previous work. Therefore, what is f prime of x? Cosine of x, the original lowercase f of t function with the variable x instead of the variable t. Let's consider the even more difficult case of uppercase f of x equals the integral from 1 to x squared, lowercase f of t dt. Notice the upper endpoint of integration now is a function in and of itself. Check the result for this case by performing the following two steps for each of the functions in exercises 4 through 6. Step 1. Given lowercase f of t, evaluate uppercase f of x equals the integral from 1 to x squared, lowercase f of t dt to find uppercase f of x in terms of x. Step 2. Take the derivative of the result to determine uppercase f prime of x. Now let's remember that when uppercase f of x is defined to be the integral from a to g of x, some function of f of t dt, then uppercase f prime of x is going to be f of g of x times g prime of x. These examples will verify this result. So let's let uppercase f of x be the integral from 1 to x squared of t cubed dt. That's going to be 1 fourth t to the fourth from 1 to x squared, which will be 1 fourth x to the eighth minus 1 fourth. Therefore, f prime of x is going to be 2x to the seventh. Now, instead of integrating, let's find uppercase f prime of x by using this result. If uppercase f of x is defined to be the integral from 1 to x squared of t cubed dt, where x squared is g of x and t cubed is lowercase f of t, then f prime of x will be x squared cubed times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. That's x to the 6th times 2x, which is 2x to the 7th. The same result we got by integrating the function. Now let's just use this result to get our answers for 5 and 6. If uppercase f of x is equal to the integral from 1 to x squared of cosine t dt, then we know that f prime of x will be cosine of x squared times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. That will be 2x cosine x squared. For number 6, if uppercase f of x is defined to be the integral from 1 to x squared of 6 square root of t dt, then f prime of x will be 6 square root of x squared times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. This is going to simplify to 6x times 2x, which is 12x squared. Let uppercase f of x equal the integral from 2 to x of lowercase f of t dt. The graph of f on the interval negative 2, 6 consists of two line segments and a quarter of a circle as shown at right. Notice that the lower endpoint of integration is 2, so that will be the starting point for finding these function values. The area of this triangle is negative 2, this is positive 2, this is pi, and this is 4. Let's find f of 0 and f of 4. Starting at 2 and going back to 0, this area is 2, however moving backwards means the function value will be the opposite as the sign of the area. So f of 0 will be negative 2. f of 4 now will be from 2 to 4. Since we're moving to the right, the sign of the area will be the sign of the function value, and that will be pi. Letter B. Determine the interval where uppercase f of x is increasing and justify your answer. Since lowercase f of t is the slope function of uppercase f of x, we know that where the slopes are positive, 
uppercase f of x is increasing, and that's on the interval from 0 to 6. Why? Because f of t is positive there. Letter C. Find the critical numbers of uppercase f of x and determine if each corresponds to a relative minimum value, a relative maximum value, or neither, and justify your answers. Since this is the derivative function, the critical numbers occur where this function equals 0, and that's going to be at 0 and 4. They are critical numbers, but they're not necessarily maximum or minimum values unless the function changes from negative to positive or positive to negative. That happens here at 0, but that doesn't happen here at 4. So even though there is a critical number at 4, there is no extreme value here. However, at 0, since the slopes change from negative to positive there, we know that there's a minimum value at x equals 0. Why? f of t changes from negative to positive there. Letter D. Find the absolute extreme values of uppercase f of x and the x values at which they occur and justify your answers. We know that the extreme values of the function will occur at the critical numbers of the function where the derivative is equal to 0 or at the endpoints of the interval. So we're going to need to see what the function values are at negative 2, the endpoint of the interval, at 0, there's a critical number there. We'll also need to know what the function value is at 4, another critical number, and also at 6, the endpoint of the interval. The function value at negative 2 is going to be the accumulated area from 2 to negative 2, which will be the combined area of these two triangles, and that is 0. f of 0, as we already calculated, is negative 2. f of 4, as we saw previously, is pi. And f of 6 will be pi plus 4. This means that the absolute minimum value occurs at x equals 0. The absolute maximum value occurs at x equals 6. Letter E. Find the x-coordinates of the inflection points of uppercase f of x and justify your answer. Lowercase f is the first derivative of uppercase f, so we're looking at the slopes of this function in order to determine inflection points. This will occur where the slope of this function changes from positive to negative or negative to positive, and this occurs at two places, 2 and 4. So uppercase f has inflection points at x equals 2 and x equals 4. Why? because the second derivative of uppercase f, which is the first derivative of lowercase f, changes sign at those points. Letter f. Determine the intervals where the graph of uppercase f of x is concave down. Justify your answer. That's going to occur where the slope of f is negative, and this occurs from 2 to 4. So uppercase f of x is concave down on the interval 2, 4. Why? Because f prime is negative there. Our last example is from the 2002 AP exam. This problem was on the no calculator allowed section of the exam. The graph of the function f shown above consists of two line segments. Let g be the function given by g of x equals the integral from 0 to x of f of t dt. Notice that the lower endpoint of integration is 0, which means that will be our starting point in finding function values for g of x. I've included the areas of the relevant triangles here. Letter A says find g of negative 1, g prime of negative 1, and g double prime of negative 1. Remember g is the integral of this function, so we can calculate g of negative 1 by finding the area between the curve and the x-axis from 0 to negative 1. Since we're moving backwards, we'll use the opposite sign of the area found here. So g of negative 1 
is negative 3 halves. g prime of negative 1 will be the function value on this curve. Remember g prime is f, and so we need the function value at negative 1 on this graph, which is 0. g double prime of negative 1 is going to be the slope at negative 1 on this graph. The slope of this line is 3, Therefore, g double prime of negative 1 is 3. Letter B. For what values of x in the open interval from negative 2 to 2 is g increasing? And explain your reasoning. Since g is the integral of this function, g will be increasing where these slopes are positive, and that's on the interval from negative 1 to 1. Why? Because f is positive there. Letter C. For what values of x in the open interval from negative 2 to 2 is the graph of g concave down and explain your reasoning? g will be concave down when the derivative of this function is negative. So we're looking for where the slope is negative on this function, and that's happening from 0 to 2. Therefore, g is concave down from 0 to 2. Why? Because f prime is negative there. Letter D. On the axes provided, sketch the graph of G on the closed interval from negative 2 to 2. So let's find these function values. G of negative 2 will be the accumulated area from 0 to negative 2. In this case, that's the value of these two triangles, but the combined area of these triangles is 0. So G of negative 2 is 0. G of negative 1, the distance from 0 to negative 1, previously calculated, and that's going to be negative 3 halves. G of 0 will be the distance from 0 to 0. No area is accumulated, so G of 0 will be 0. G of 1, the area accumulated from 0 to 1, and that's the area of this triangle. Since we're moving to the right, we keep the sign of the area a positive 3 halves. G of 2, the area accumulated from 0 to 2. That's the combined area of these two triangles, which is 0. Plotting these points on this coordinate plane, we have negative 2, 0, negative 1, negative 3 halves, 0, 0, 1, positive 3 halves, and 2, comma 0. Now we know that these are not straight lines connecting these points because these slopes vary, which indicates we're graphing a curve. If we were graphing a line, this would be a constant function, indicating that the slope was constant. So let's look at the concavity to determine the nature of this curve. Since the slope of f here is positive, this is indicating a concave up section of the curve from negative 2 to 0. Then we have the slope of this section of f negative, indicating that from 0 to 2 we have a concave down section of the curve. In addition, we know that for this region, because f is negative here, we have negative slopes. For this region, since f is positive, we have positive slopes. And for this region, since f is negative, we have negative slopes. Here are the scoring guidelines for that question. On letter A, three points were awarded, one each for g of negative 1, g prime of negative 1, and g double prime of negative 1. On letter B, two points were awarded, one for the interval on which g was increasing and one for the reason. For letter C, two points were awarded, one for the interval on which G was concave down, and another for the reason, and two points were awarded for letter D, one for correctly calculating G of negative 2, G of 0, and G of 2 to be 0, and another for appropriate increasing, decreasing, and concavity behavior. Tip number 7 for the AP Calculus AB exam. Be sure you have answered the problem. For example, if it asks for the maximum value of a function, do not stop after finding the x at which the maximum value occurs. Remember, if they want to know where the maximum value is, give the x value. If they want to know what the maximum value is, give the y value. Be sure to express your answer in correct units if units are given. 
Common student error number seven. I should round my answers to the place which makes the most sense for the problem. No, you should not. Pay attention to any instructions given which specify how your answer should be rounded. Otherwise, always round to the thousands place. That's it for today's rather lengthy lecture. I'm so glad you're mathematically mature enough for the graphic content on this page. God bless you, boys and girls.